Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patch Report for March of 2023. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at the Zero Day Initiative, your Information Security Gnome and Chief Patch Wrangler. And let me be the first to wish you a happy Pi Day. That's right, it is 314, at least here in North America, when we do the month before the day, because we like that, okay? Uh, we've got a huge release to get into, so let's just jump straight into it. And let's start out by talking about Adobe Patches. We don't normally uh, talk a lot about Adobe Patches because they're not always as exciting, but we have a huge release. It's actually 105 CVEs in eight bulletins uh, across from Adobe. And of course, the most important one is Cold Fusion because it's listed under Active Attack. Um, I haven't seen an active exploit uh, in an unpatched Adobe bug for a while, so... Yes, I know not that many people run Cold Fusion anymore, but there are still a lot of folks who are. And if you are running Cold Fusion, take the time and go patch immediately, because like I said, this bug is under active attack. There are three bugs listed in the bulletin. It's not entirely clear, but I'm gonna guess it's the critical rated code execution bug. That's a CVSS of 9.8. Just a guess on that one. Uh, moving on through the rest of the update, we've got a huge patch for Dimension with nearly 60 CVEs, uh, a lot of them coming through the ZDI program, uh, through our researchers, Matt, Matt Powell and uh, Michael DePlante. So good on those boys for uh, pumping out some bugs. Uh, and they've got a lot of Substance 3D stager bugs as well. Uh, the Experience Manager hits 18 bugs. These are not quite as exciting. There's a lot of cross-site scripting bugs. If you're using Commerce, uh, that usually means that there's some money involved, right? So definitely take a look at that patch because it's relatively important too. It's not code execution, but it's unauthenticated a file system read. So just imagine if somebody could get all of your customer information or whatever. Uh, the updates for Photoshop and Illustrator are both open and own, meaning you get a file and you open it and then code execution at the level of the logged on user. And the Creative Cloud patch fixes a single uh, critical rated code execution bug. So a lot of interesting stuff there in the Adobe release this month. Again, Cold Fusion under active attack. Now, moving on to the Microsoft patches for 20, March of 2023. We have 74 new CVEs and uh, six prior CVEs, so a total of 80. Uh, the usual suspects here, Windows, Windows Components, Office, Edge, Chromium-based, uh, Dynamics, Visual Studio, and Azure, of course. Is it Azure or Azure? I never know. I used to work there and I still don't know. I think it's Azure. That's what I'm going with. Uh, so we've got a couple things in GitHub and a couple TPM ones. Uh, there is some stuff going around with the UEFI uh, boot kits called Black Lotus. I don't think any of the TPM updates this month are related to that. There's no indication that they are, uh, but let's just say they're not. So we've got a few critical ones, but let's start out with the big one. And this is this Outlook spoofing vulnerability. It is also under active attack. <clears throat> And it is awesome. Um, awesome from a, you know, intellectual point of view. It's like, hey, this is a really cool bug. Not awesome if you're affected by this. Uh, it's listed as a spoofing bug, but what happens is you send an affected system uh, a message and it responds with the NTL MV2 hash. Awesome, because then you can relay that and effectively bypass authentication everywhere. And uh, preview pane? Nope, 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 nope. This, bug's hit, this bug hits before the preview pane. So it's even more important. And hey, if that isn't fun enough, if you're running Exchange on-prem, first of all, reconsider your life choices. Second of all, you need to go uh, read the Exchange blog because you have to take some updates as well to clearly, to fully uh, protect yourself from this particular bug. So I'll leave a link in the uh, show notes below to the Microsoft uh, Exchange blog covering everything you need to do. A lot of it depends on what cumulative update that you've already installed. But just know that this bug is under active attack and it can be used for authentication bypass. It's really cool. The other one is actually two bugs under active attack right now. And this is uh, the Windows smart screen security feature bypass. Essentially, mark of the web, we've talked about it before. If you get a thing from the internet, it should have a mark of the web on it, which should say, hey, let's uh, take some extra precautions. This bug allows you to bypass those precautions but you still are an open and own sort of scenario. You're just not getting the, are you sure you want to enable that dialogues like you normally would? And as always, uh, Microsoft gives no indication on how widespread either of these bugs are being uh, exploited, but I would definitely pay attention to the Outlook spoofing bug, especially if you're running Exchange on-prem. I cannot stress this enough. 
Moving on to a couple other really interesting bugs. Uh, the first one is in the HTTP protocol stack. It's interesting for a couple reasons. First of all, it's a remote, unauthenticated code execution at system level with zero user interaction. That adds up to uh, worm. Yeah, that's wormable. Uh, now, and it's only wormable through affected systems and the affected systems would need to have HTTP3 enabled. However, that's a pretty common scenario if you're running a web server. Also note that uh, Windows 11 and Server 2022 are the only systems affected here, which means this is a newer bug and not legacy code, but since it's HTTP3, that kind of makes sense because that's a newer feature. Uh, speaking of newer, let's go with not newer, and that's ICMP fragmentation bugs. Holy cow. I've been in this industry for like a long time. And uh, one of the first bugs I learned about was an ICMP frag attack. And here we are again. Here's another potentially wormable bug, uh, this time from an error implemented in the fragmented IP packet header. It's a CVSS 9.8. The only caveat here is that an app, the target needs to have an application, just a single application bound to a raw socket. That's poor programming practices, yes, but with as many applications as we have on our systems these days, the likelihood is pretty high that that's gonna be a thing. So uh, there's some people that block ICMP at their perimeter. This has some really negative side effects. Uh, so definitely think twice before doing that, but take this one seriously. I mean, cause this could really spread. Okay, so you can see our table here covering everything uh, from the release. So definitely take a look at that. There are several uh, CVSS 9.8 bugs and 8.8s and 9.1s throughout here. So a lot to go through. Uh, and let's get to the rest of the critical rated bugs. Like I said, there is a TPM fix in here uh, that's listed as critical. I don't think it's that uh, related to Black Lotus at all. It's just interesting. Uh, there's another CVSS 9.8 in RPC runtime that technically has some warmable potential, uh, but unlike IP, IPCMP, it is a very good idea to block RPC traffic, especially TCP port 135, at your perimeter. Um, because of that, this bug is much less likely to be widely exploited, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, we have three technically wormable bugs in a single month. That's kind of awesome. Well, again, from a bugs are cool standpoint, not a I have to go defend this now standpoint. Uh, there's a critical rated Hyper-V bug that's a denial of service that uh, is it's kind of an interesting way to describe it. It allows a guest OS to affect the functionality of the Hyper-V host. I think that means a guest OS can turn off an entire Hyper-V server, which is kind of cool, again. Um, there's a critical rated cryptographic services bug that uh, needs a malicious certificate imported to a target system. We just don't see things like that exploited in the wild a lot, and it requires a lot of social engineering to go on with it too. Um, and, and finally, there is a point-to-point -point tunneling protocol bug that's technically wormable between RAS servers, but I, I really don't see that being very likely. Uh, I don't see a lot of people running that, and I don't see a lot of RAS servers these days. There are a few other code execution bugs, and of course we can't mention the code execution bugs without talking about the 10 RCEs in Postscripts and PCL6 class printer drivers. Um, huge, uh, just a whole bunch of them. There's also a really interesting one um, in Bluetooth, but it requires, according to Microsoft, the exploit requires access to the restricted network. And that's not clear if that means physical proximity or some other connection to the target device. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, there's a DNS server bug that concerned me when I saw the title, and then I saw that it requires high privileges, so that doesn't concern me as much. Still patch, obviously, but uh, no need to stress about that one. There's a couple other security feature bypass bugs that are pretty interesting. Uh, one is in Excel, and I I honestly don't know if, if I personally would have shipped this as a security patch, because you have to do a lot of clicking to get this uh, to actually hit. So in other words, you have to convince someone to click enable content and then do a few other things too. So kudos to Microsoft for fixing it uh, anyway. But uh, yeah, it, it requires a fair amount of user interaction. And uh, the other one is for OneDrive for iOS. Yes, there are some of us who use OneDrive on iOS and this could allow a uh, attacker to look at some files that are in a lock vault. Uh, however, it does require, require authentication, so not as critical. Okay, moving on to the elevation of privilege bugs this month. Uh, fair amount of them, but for the most part, it just 
you know, your running code on a target system, escalating to system. So that's, that's about it. Um, there's one in uh, HTTPS that was submitted through the ZDI program, integer overflow, it's pretty nice. There was also uh, one from uh, Marcin Lazowski. It's a UAF that allow you to uh, system. The Bluetooth one looks pretty intriguing because that will allow you uh, to escape uh, app container isolation. So I don't know how that would work, but I'm intrigued by that one. I hope the person who found that blogs about it because I'd love to see some additional details. Uh, and again, there's an update for Defender, but you probably already received that update because that happens like all the time, those updates. However, if you're isolated or uh, otherwise blocking the automatic updates, make sure that you uh, get that update. And there's also some updates that you need to get through the App Store, and that's OneDrive for Mac OS. Uh, there's another one uh, for an Android. So make sure you're paying attention to those, especially if you have uh, BYOD in your own enterprise. So make sure that all of your clients are up to date with the latest apps. Definitely take a look at that. Uh, looking at the info disclosure bugs, most of them are just random memory. Uh, there are a couple of sections. The, the interesting one is Microsoft Dynamics 365. It's leaking a verbose error message that attackers could then use to create malicious payloads. Uh, and that's about all the detail we have on that, but it's that's really interesting. Uh, and that's the type of thing that we see in the wild a lot. You see attackers getting sort of some sort of information disclosure, whether it be random memory locations that they can capitalize on or an error message, and then crafting that to additional targets, additional exploits down the line. So very interesting. Uh, OneDrive for Android could leak uh, certain things. Uh, again, go to the Google Play Store to get the update for that. There's some other spoofing bugs that are uh, pretty uh, interesting. The first in the is in Azure Apache Ambari, uh, which is a new one to me. Uh, and it's, it must be a new one to Microsoft as well because they don't provide any other details on that. Uh, let's see, we've got a bug in Service Fabric that could allow a web client to execute code on a target's browser. That's pretty cool. Um, however, Microsoft does note that you need to click through a sequence of multiple events for exploitation. So probably not very realistic uh, as far as an exploit scenario goes. Um, and again, this is one kind of like Defender. It's probably going to automatically update. But if you're isolated or whatever, you need to make sure that you apply the update uh, to get protected. Let's see, we've got uh, a bug in SharePoint that's uh, clicking a link. So not a whole lot of user interaction on that. So uh, if you could do that, similar on Edge, um, you click a link and then uh, Office for Android as well. Don't be clicking links, people. It's just not worth it. There's no link out there worth it, except to the link to this blog. So uh, definitely do that. Uh, so a couple of DOSes, nothing huge here. Uh, Windows Secure Channel and Internet Key Exchange. No real details on that, but when I just look at those components and think of a DOS, I'm thinking, well, that's gonna disrupt authentication somehow. Uh, however, there is an interesting DOS bug in Excel. So when I think about DOSes and I think about Office applications, normally it's open the application, the application, you know, it craps out on you. But that's not the case here. In this case, if you open a malicious file with Excel on an affected system, uh, you would run out of resources on the system. Uh, and that's wild. And it's not clear if the resource ex exhaustion would clear if you could control shift escape and get to the task manager and kill Excel, or if you would have to reboot the entire system. I've seen some resource exhaustion that essentially just like uh, freeze a system completely. And then you have to hit that one zero button until the power goes off and then power cycle it. So interesting bug from that perspective, uh, just kind of another wrinkle on some bad Excelness. And finally, the release is wrapped up by five cross-site scripting bugs and dynamics which is a really interesting trend or a really interesting coincidence because there were five last month too. So, you know, no one cares other than people like me who count bugs. So there you have it. That's pretty much it. Uh, and finally, there is a new servicing stack update this month. It is in the favorite advisory 990001, which has been revised a whole lot of times. So that's it. That pretty much takes us to the end of the release. And like I said, your focus this month, if anything, should be on the Cold Fusion, if you're running that, the Outlook updates, because you probably are running some form of Outlook, to make sure you get that patched. And then the other things that are just big and wormable that are out there. Uh, so please test and deploy them uh, quickly. 
We're looking forward to that. And hey, just as a little Pi Day bonus, a little math humor for you, everyone knows why uh, six is afraid of seven, but why was four afraid to ask out five? Well, turns out four was just two squared. Anyway, I'm Dustin Childs for the Zero Day Initiative. I will see you next month. Until then, stay safe, happy patching, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.